Well, hi there. This is Theo, and he's my dog. I've had him for almost three years now, and I'm just getting around to making a video about dogs because this is honestly one of the most difficult videos I've ever made. It's hard to put into words what it is like having a dog because dogs are, in some ways, the absolute best pet that you could ever have. And at the same time, they're probably the wrong choice of a pet for the majority of people. Obviously, I have a lot of pets. And Theo is uniquely spectacular. And in many ways, the absolute worst pet that I have. And he is, for very many reasons, one of the most reasonable dogs that you could keep. But today, I want to attempt to communicate to you what it is like having a dog and to help you determine if a dog is the right pet for you. And to do this, we're gonna have to score the dog based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the dog a score of four out of five. Keep in mind that this is sort of an average score for dogs as a group. All of the scores will be. And some of the breeds are clearly better for handling than four and some are much, much worse. Dogs are also, and this too depends on the breed, highly trainable. So if you want a dog that is great to handle, it is very possible to get one that can become exceedingly handleable. But it is also very possible to get a dog that will try to kill you and that could actually succeed. Dogs bite millions of people every year and send tens of thousands or more for reconstructive surgery. We give some of the dog bite statistics in the United States during our interview with Lindsay Bull, who'd been bitten and rolled by an alligator. So dogs can be extremely dangerous. I myself was severely attacked by our Alaskan Malmute when I was a small child. If I weren't wearing a coat at the time, I probably would have been killed. I almost lost an eye and had to have facial reconstructive surgery performed by a plastic surgeon. And I don't say this to villainize dogs. Heck, I still gave them a four out of five for handleability. Dog attacks happen for a variety of reasons, and many or most involve mistreatment and error committed by humans. Mistreatment is easily avoidable, but people make mistakes, even you. Are you prepared for that responsibility? Do you know how to train an animal? If you do, then the interactive relationship that you can have with a dog can be unparalleled by probably any other pet. Dogs can become a member of your family. It's honestly difficult not to think of Theo as being just another kid. Of course, children get the lowest score we've ever given, but he does feel like a person, except like the nicest person you've ever met. He loves you, always, every hour of every day. He doesn't take days off, he just loves you. Theo here just wants to hang out with you all the time. He sleeps in our bed, he plays with the kids. He has never shown any aggression towards anyone, ever. But I never leave him unsupervised with a child he could take in a fight. And not all dogs are as small or patient as he is. Additional issues include that they often shed hair all over you and everything else. They have claws that hurt if they're trying to get away from you, but they can't drop their tails. They are also soft and warm, and they generally really like social interaction. When it comes to care, I'm giving the dog a score of two out of five, and I'm being generous. It is the worst when they're puppies. Some pets are easier when they're small, and, and that gives you time to prepare. If you get a puppy, you go from nothing to toddler basically overnight. I would give puppies a score of zero out of five. When we got Theo, it had been several years since we'd had a human baby. Well, I have to tell you, by the time Martha came along, we were battle-hardened from a year of raising a puppy. Yeah, a baby might wake you up in the night, but you don't then need to stand outside in the cold for 10 minutes while it decides if it wants to pee or if it just wants to see how long you will stand out there in your pajamas and a coat before you give up and then pee in its bed and roll in it to give you another fun job to do before morning. And while a baby might break some things in your house, it usually isn't a brand new pair of shoes or a couch. Much of this gets better with age and training, but puppies are a full-time job. But adult dogs are better, much better. But 
they are still a lifestyle. If you get a boa, your life will change in the following ways. You will have an enclosure in your home that needs to be spot cleaned about once a week. There is a bag labeled frozen rodents in your freezer that you need to explain to any other people that you live with. Every one to two weeks, you need to thaw out one of those bad boys and present it to your snake. And you need to keep that water bowl filled up. If you don't have time to mess with your snake today, nobody cares. If you want to get your boa out today, you will have a spectacular experience. If you don't have time to interact with it for the next three days, well, that's also fine. If you go out of town for a week, just make sure the water bowl is full and have a good trip. More than a week, have a friend come over and pour in some water. The thing is that a boa adds to your life but makes almost no impact on your day-to-day -day life. Staying out late tonight, you know who doesn't care? Your boa. You know who cares a lot? Your dog. And as a result of how much your dog cares, your neighbors also now care. Food and water are easy. Keep the water bowl full. Prepared diets are widely and affordably available. Just keep an eye on your dog's weight. Crate training may be a good idea. You might need a dog run. A fenced yard is ideal. But you can get away with a small enclosure, if any enclosure at all. And all sorts of accessories, toys, beds, and the like, are all available for them. The main thing is that they need attention every day, many times a day. And if they're not getting it, they're likely to get loud and destructive. And that's fine because they genuinely do need it. This is a hyper-social animal. That is one of their best traits, and it's also one of their worst traits. This animal will be your full-time best friend. What does it require in return? Simply that you be its full-time best friend as well. But unfortunately, your new best friend is not allowed, or at least not very welcome, to many of your favorite places. And yet, many breeds, especially larger breeds, do need to get out regularly. So you're going to get to know your neighborhood very well, even when it's unpleasantly hot or cold outside. Theo is an amazing hiking buddy, which is great because my family does a lot of hiking when the weather is good. But in the winter, I'm glad that Theo is small enough that he gets most of the exercise that he needs just exploring the house, walking the kids to school, and on the other short walks that we were going to take anyway. But you're going to need to bring bags wherever you go. Now that's a best friend. I'd like to take a moment just to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon. Uh, a little while back, I, I got to do a really fun video, uh, part of a series that I hope to continue on in the future called Closer to Nature. And, and that's something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And, and if you notice, I got to bring Theo along with me on that adventure. That wouldn't have been possible without the new equipment that we were able to get thanks to the support of our patrons at Patreon. You guys really give us abilities to do things we just never have been able to do before and we couldn't do without you. So if you'd like to support you know, our, our ability to increase our capabilities, or if you'd just like to see the cool features that we have for our patrons, please consider checking it out. When it comes to hardiness, we give the dog a score of five out of five. Honestly, unless you're a cruel, heartless individual, your dog is probably going to do well. It isn't that there aren't health concerns, especially for purebreds, which is polite for inbreds, but generally a dog that isn't getting what it needs will let you and the rest of the neighborhood know. If you refuse to give it the necessities of life in the face of all that it will do to let you know, you're a monster. With proper care and depending on the size and breed, your dog should live five to about 20 years. When it comes to availability, we give the dog a score of 5 out of 5. Pretty much, no matter where you live on Earth, you can get a dog. While some legislation prohibits specific breeds, there is little to no legislation banning dogs outright. Probably your landlord or HOA are your biggest obstacles. And if you don't want to do puppy, I have some great news. There are so many adult dogs out there that need good homes. It, it's crazy. Lots of people get dogs not knowing what they're getting themselves into. Or life changed, and dogs are not a casual pursuit. Long story short, dogs need to be adopted. If this is the lifestyle you want, get one, but give them a good home. Losing your pack is a big stress for a social animal like a dog. They've been through enough. A boa can bounce from one quality home to the next and not experience any emotional damage. Not a dog. Understand that before you get one. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the dog a score of three out of five. Dogs themselves can range from free to insane. That is in terms of money. 
Honestly, the biggest upfront cost will be in terms of your time and energy, and that actually just factors into care. Though to be perfectly honest, the amount of time and energy that you put into a dog could be turned into a lot of money if you worked on a job instead of a dog, but it still won't count here. Other than the dog, you'll need things like bowls, food, a crate, leashes, toys, and a little cash stash for things that your puppy destroys. If you need a run or to put in a fence, well, that would make this score lower still. And then there is the money that you will need for vaccinations, registration, and regular vet care. And this doesn't factor in, but end-of-life care for a dog can be very expensive. It is amazing how much a dog can become part of the family. They feel so much like a wonderful person. You've invested so much time, effort, and love into them. And that often translates into you being willing to sacrifice a great deal not to have to let them go. So just know that going in. In many ways, this animal will be the most consistently loyal friend you have ever had. Letting it go can be difficult. Can you put a price on that extra time? And what is that price? And this is why, overall, we give the dog a score of 3.8 out of 5. This isn't the best score we've ever given. This isn't even the best score that we have given to a mammal. This isn't an easy pet. A dog is a lifestyle. Your life, in significant ways, revolves around the fact that you have a dog. And many of the changes are not flattering. Having a dog really sucks sometimes. But I also cannot put into words what a special animal this is. It's almost like we took an already intelligent and social animal and then deliberately and often inhumanely bred them for millennia to be the ultimate best friends. If what you want isn't just something that adds considerable joy to your life, like a boa or a cat, but rather a full-time best friend that loves you almost unconditionally, someone that is there with pure joy in their eyes when you get home from a tough day, that seems to worship the ground on which you walk, and you're willing to give almost that amount of love in return, then the dog isn't only the best pet for you, it is frankly the only pet that is going to fill that hole in your heart. But that is a lot to ask of yourself. It's okay to say, you know, maybe I'm not ready for that. Maybe I want an emerald tree skink, an aki, or a rat. Heck, dogs even make tegus seem reasonable. But they're amazing, and I hope that I've managed to do that justice. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. We're not done yet. Oh, you're willing to lay down over there. Okay. Oh, he, he just always wants to make everyone in the room feel loved. <laughs> That's what we've been fighting this whole time. It's just... But, but they need love! Yeah. Oh, you're gonna lay by my feet? You're so, this is where he is most of the time. He, usually he's not more than 10 feet away from us, but sometimes I'll be like, where is he? And I'm looking, I'm like, oh, he's right there. You know, like, like he... It, especially me and Leisha, he, he doesn't follow the kids around, but he, he just hangs out with us. Like, even if you get in the shower, like he'll be there up against the bathtub, peeking out from under the shower curtain. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just, he's just so sweet. Peekaboo! Good boy, sit. Good boy. Down, down. Good boy. Up. Good boy. Yo, bang! Good boy, where you go? You are. High five! Oh yeah, that's high ten. High five! High five! Yo, say it! High five! Good boy! Thank you. What a good boy you are! High ten! Good boy! Good boy! Good boy! Okay, leave it. Go get it! Good boy! Thank you. Theo, come! Sit. Okay. Feel sit. Hey, bye. Good boy, shake. Good boy. What a good boy you are. What a good boy. Feel sit. Good boy. High ten. Yeah. What a good boy you are. What a good boy you are. Leave it. Good boy. Leave it. Leave it. Theo, look. Theo, look. You have to hit the bottom of this chain. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Go get it. Good boy. <laughs> what a good boy you are. What a good boy. Ooh. That good, huh? Yes. You need to go?